Have you ever wondered what makes some shoes grip the ground so well, while others leave you slipping and sliding? The secret lies not just in the design, but in the science of materials, specifically the properties of rubber. In this video, we're diving into the fascinating world of rubber shoe soles and the science behind their grip. Whether it's running on a wet sidewalk, hiking a rocky trail, or pivoting on a basketball court, the grip of your shoe plays a vital role in performance and safety. But what exactly gives rubber that magical sticking power? Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics, friction. Grip is essentially the result of friction between the sole of your shoe and the surface you're walking or running on. Friction is a force that opposes motion, and it depends on two key factors, the nature of the surfaces in contact and the force pressing them together. While we might think of rubber as just a squishy material, it actually behaves in very complex ways when interacting with different surfaces. Rubber is a viscoelastic material, which means it has both elastic and viscous properties. This unique combination allows it to deform under pressure and then return to its original shape, sort of like a memory foam that bounces back. When rubber presses against a surface, it flows into the tiny imperfections and textures of that surface, maximizing contact and increasing friction. Now here's where it gets really interesting. The grip of a rubber sole isn't just about how much surface area is in contact, it's also about how rubber interacts with the micro texture of a surface at the molecular level. Scientists refer to this as hysteresis friction. As the rubber moves across a rough surface, it deforms and recovers repeatedly. This continual deformation absorbs energy, which results in resistance to sliding, what we perceive as grip. Hysteresis is particularly important when walking on rough or uneven ground because the sole has to flex and adapt to the terrain. The more energy the rubber can absorb and dissipate during this process, the better the grip. But there's another type of friction at play too, adhesive friction. This occurs at the contact points where rubber molecules actually interact with the surface molecules. Rubber is sticky by nature, especially softer compounds. This stickiness allows the rubber to stick slightly to the surface, providing extra traction. However, there's a trade-off here. Softer rubbers provide better grip, but they also wear out faster. That's why shoe manufacturers carefully balance the hardness and elasticity of rubber compounds, depending on the intended use of the shoe. Grippy sports shoes use softer rubber, while everyday sneakers tend to use harder, more durable soles. The tread pattern of a rubber sole also plays a critical role in grip. Just like car tires, shoe soles often have grooves, lugs, and textures designed to channel away water, dirt, or debris and maintain contact with the ground. On wet surfaces, for example, water can act as a lubricant and drastically reduce grip, but a well-designed tread can displace this water, preventing hydroplaning and keeping the sole in close contact with the ground. On rugged trails, deep lugs dig into dirt and provide mechanical grip in addition to the material's inherent friction. Temperature is another factor that can drastically affect the grip of rubber. Because rubber is viscoelastic, its properties change with temperature. At colder temperatures, rubber becomes stiffer and less flexible, reducing its ability to conform to surface irregularities and decreasing grip. That's why specialized shoes like winter boots use different rubber compounds engineered to stay soft even in sub-zero conditions. 
Conversely, in very hot conditions, rubber can become too soft, increasing wear and possibly losing structural support. High-performance athletic shoes often include rubber formulations optimized for specific temperature ranges or use environments, such as indoor courts, synthetic tracks, or outdoor trails. Another fascinating aspect of rubber grip is the role of additives and fillers. Manufacturers often tweak rubber compounds with chemicals like carbon black or silica to enhance performance. Carbon black, for example, strengthens the rubber and improves its abrasion resistance without sacrificing too much grip. Silica, on the other hand, improves wet weather traction and lowers rolling resistance, which is why it's widely used in both car tires and high-end running shoes. These additives also influence how the rubber interacts with the microscopic details of a surface, further fine-tuning the balance between stickiness, durability, and performance. Let's not forget that not all rubber is created equal. Natural rubber comes from latex derived from rubber trees and has excellent elasticity and grip properties. However, it's sensitive to temperature and UV light. Synthetic rubbers like styrene butadian rubber or ethylene vinyl acetate offer more stability and can be engineered to exhibit specific performance characteristics. For example, Vibram soles, known for their use in hiking and mountaineering boots, often use specialized synthetic rubber blends that maximize grip and durability in extreme conditions. In sportswear, compounds like Nike Zumex or Adidas's Continental Rubber represent the high-tech end of the spectrum where material science meets athletic performance. The science behind the grip of rubber shoe soles is a blend of physics, chemistry, and engineering. From the molecular makeup of the rubber to the tread pattern and environmental conditions, every element plays a role in how well a shoe grips the ground. It's a perfect example of how everyday materials are anything but ordinary. The next time you lace up your shoes, whether you're heading out for a run or simply walking to the store, take a moment to appreciate the complex science that keeps you steady on your feet. Rubber soles may seem simple, but they are the result of decades of research and innovation, all dedicated to making sure you don't slip, fall, or lose your footing. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.